Coming up are our top five climbs of the 2018 Giro d'Italia, starting with Mount Etna. Featuring for the second year in succession, the volcanic ascent on Sicily will erupt into our consciousness as early as stage six. The scorched barren landscape, 1,361 metres above sea level, serving as the first summit finish of the race. Last year, the surprise stage winner was Jan Polanch of Team UAE Emirates, who escaped the stalemate amongst the GC contenders. We have no real overall shakeup last year. The route to the summit will be taken this year via a road that has never been used at the Giro before. Starting from Regalna, it is 14.1 kilometers long with an average gradient of 6.5% and some steeper sections which rear up to 14 and 15%. Will this new route provide more opportunities for the pure climbers? We'll find out on stage six. The mighty Monte Zonkalan is the crowning glory of the 186 km stage 14, which goes from San Vito al Tagliamento to the summit of the fearsome climb itself. First introduced to the Giro in 2003, when Gilberto Simone won the stage en route to Giro victory, the giant of the Carnic Alps has been tackled a total of five times, the last of which was back in 2014 when Mick Rogers prevailed. The Montezoncalan can be climbed by three roads, but this year sees the most difficult ascent, approaching from the west from Ovaro. It is relentlessly steep. The section between kilometers two and six average a lactate-inducing 15.2%, with the gradient for the entire 10 kilometer length of the climb averaging just under 12%. Whether or not there's a non-GC break up the road remains to be seen, uh, but there's no doubt that these incredibly steep slopes on this iconic mountain will see potentially big gains and losses amongst those fighting for the Magliarosa. The ferocity of the gradient will mean that physics will favour the pure lightweight climbers, who will have to attack and exploit the opportunity to take time on their heavier all-rounders. This is their playground, so expect some fun and games. The last time this incredibly beautiful climb was used was in the 2014 Giro, when race leader Alberto Condor was put under some pressure by a searing attack from Mikel Lander, the dirt road to the summit providing some spectacular theatre. Topping out at a lofty 2,129 metres in the Cotian Alps, the Colla della Finestra is this year's Cima copy, marking the highest point of the race. The gradient is a relatively constant one, but it is steep, averaging 9.2% over its 18.5 kilometers and maxing out at 14%. The first 10.7 k's is on asphalt road before the transition to dirt, or sterato, for the last 7.8 k's to the summit. The Colla della Finestra comes deep into the race on stage 19 and precedes the climbs of Sestriere, then the fierce summit up the Jaffrau, so it could prove to be a pivotal point in the overall outcome of this year's race. Now the word epic is often overused in cycling, but it is quite fitting in every way for this most majestic of mountain passes. Finestre means window in Italian, and you can see why, as the views from its higher slopes provide a view like no other. Who will have the perfect view come the 19th of May? Again, only time will tell. The Colla della Finestre leads us nicely on to the Jaffarau itself. The summit finished to stage 19. It's a climb not without its controversy. It made its Giro debut in 1974, with Eddie Merckx catching Jose Manuel Fuente on its slopes to take a stage victory in the pink jersey. But several rides were also disqualified for hitching a ride up to the finish. Mauro Sant'Ambrogio won the last time the Giro visited here on a very cold day in 2013, but that result was then scrubbed after he received a doping ban. Let's hope this year sees us remember the Jaffrau for purely sporting reasons. It will offer a real sting in the tail for the riders. Starting from the town of Bardenecchia, the fourth and final summit of the day is 7.2 kilometers in length, averaging just over 9%. A fitting end to what should be a decisive stage. The last chance to make a difference in the general classification will come on stage 20. That's the final day in the mountains before the processional stage 21 into Rome. It's another summit finish and Chavinia is the destination, the third highest peak in the Italian Alps, close to the border with Switzerland. It's an 18.2 kilometer climb that averages 5.3%, but take out some of the more gradual slopes at the foot and towards the top, and you've got something close to 7% in the middle. How this climb is raced will probably depend on the situation on the road. 
the team in possession of the Maglia Rosa at the time may see this as a climb that they can control if the favourites stay together. But once again, there are two climbs proceeding to Vigna that might be the launch pad for a long range move. One thing is for sure, this climb will decide the race in the Oster Valley under the shadow of the Matterhorn. With some of the traditional Giro Mountains absent from this year's race, uh, as such the Stelvio, the Garvey, etc. Those, we think, are the five most iconic climbs in 2018. Uh, no doubt you will have your own opinions though, so you can leave your comments on your favourite climbs from this year's race just down below this video. Uh, that's the end of this video of the five most important climbs of this year's race. Of course, the non-categorised climbs and some of the lesser known climbs could have as much of an influence on the outcome as the ones we have just mentioned. However, if you would like to get more details on the Colla della Finestre, one of Matt and Sai's favourite climbs ever, uh, you can watch this next video entitled The Most Epic Climb in the World? You can decide and once again let us know in the comments. You can find it just here.